Yes, the answer is yes. Aloha United We Stand, yeah. one of the great charitable organizations in the state, and to make it possible to talk to some of their beneficial organ beneficiary organizations, and one of them is the American Cancer Society. And our old friend Jackie Young is here. Uh, she has been for many years the chief staff officer of the, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, American Cancer Society, Hawaii chapter, I guess. Right. And she retired a few <laughs> years ago. Yeah, so, but she's back to talk about that. Again. I'm back to talk because I stayed on the Hope Lodge campaign committee ah. and I have great news today. Yeah. Our building is built, Hope Lodge is built, the Clarence T.C. Ching Hope Lodge. Doors will be open for a grand opening next Saturday, November 19th mm -hmm. from 12 noon to 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then on the 29th, we'll be accepting our first guest. I have so, a recollection that it is very near, the Hope Lodge is a place yes. where people from the neighbor islands can come and live while they're getting cancer treatment at the medical institutions in, in Honolulu, am I right? Right up the street, right up the yeah. street from uh, Bishop Street on uh, Vineyard Avenue, 251 yeah. Vineyard yeah, Avenue. Yeah. Behind the gas uh, station there. Yeah. Behind the gas station yeah. uh, next to uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter's Here's office. Here's a picture of it. Here's a, oh, that's yeah. nice. Right. Look and at that building, A that's little, uh, little cul-de-sac there. Yeah. And uh, thanks to Clarence T. C. Ching, uh, the naming there, who gave us the first three and a half million dollars to start yeah. our campaign, yeah. and the doors will be open. We're just so excited about that. What a lovely building. How, what's the capacity? Uh, Twenty rooms. So uh, and it's for there's a double bed in there, or two single beds, and it's for a patient and a caretaker. And we're hoping to welcome neighbor island people and people from other Pacific Islanders and people who live an hour away from Honolulu, 40 miles or an hour away. So people out in Waianae, oh, that, North Shore, yeah. you know, Kahuku, you know, the, the traffic is really bad, and they have to come in and get treatment. And rather than fight the traffic, they can stay there with a social worker or a doctor's uh, note that they they're going through cancer treatment. Yeah. So um, uh, is this cost to them free? It's free. It's free lodging. Um, it's really wonderful because one of the um, stressors of having cancer is having to worry about how to pay for sure. pay for the transportation, especially if you're from the neighbor islands. It's not covered or even by if you're yet. from the other side of the island, from Kahuku and North Shore, yeah. driving in. Yeah. It's not easy to drive in anymore. Yeah. You know, so uh, to come in and to know you can go for treatment, you can spend the night at Hope Lodge without charge. We also have a van there that will be taking them to their treatments. You know, so whether it's at Kaiser, at Tripler, at Queens, uh, all yeah, the hospitals, qualify. all the hospitals, wherever they're, or doctors, uh, cancer doctors' uh, office, you know, we'll be able to take them there. And awesome. that, that is a big stress because driving in Honolulu is not easy if sure. you're from outside. And if you're not Honolulu. feeling well to begin with, oh it's really a hassle. And yes. uh, cabs are expensive, even Uber cabs. Yes, yes. <laughs> but it's the traffic, you know. The traffic, yeah. So, uh, and they, how long can they stay? Because sometimes, you know, this, this kind of either uh, chemo or uh, radiation, whatever it takes, is over a fairly long Well, you know, we're the 33rd Hope Lodge in the United States, so we've already learned that they probably say up to 15 days. They can stay. Mm -hmm. Some of it's overnight, but they can stay up to 15 days. Frankly, there's a woman in New York who has stayed there over a year because her treatment has been so intensive mm -hmm. and so specialized. That's the only place nearby, but she doesn't at least have to worry about her lodging. Yeah. You know, so for us, we don't expect that because we are close to our homes here. But people will probably be staying up to 15 days. Well, you can be flexible if there's if you're not. Uh, maxed out in terms of the number of people in the, uh, in the, in the well uh, 20 we have only 20 rooms yeah. you know so that's our maximum and when we're at full capacity we expect the 20 rooms but um, from the neighbor islands about 600 people a year 650 people a year come to Honolulu oh. for some kind of special so you probably treatment. will be maxed out yeah they come for a PET scan they come for specialized treatments they come for clinical trials at the University Cancer Center mm -hmm. so they can come and stay there instead of having to go and wait two hours at the airport fly back 
you know, back yeah. and forth. And yeah, it yeah. Also, or, or worse, get a hotel or something. Oh, well, and when we started this a few years ago, hotels, you could get a hotel room for $150 a night. I don't think you can anymore. All the prices for the hotel rooms have gone up. Even discounted rates that we used to get about $130 is not available yeah. anymore. Hotel rooms are booked. You, you think know. the hotels would set up kind of a sort of special kind well, of price? Well, they have. They have right? for us. When they have free rooms, they let us know. Or when they, not free rooms, but available rooms, and we have an agreement with them. But uh, So that would be yeah. in addition to the whole plot. That is always an addition. So if you have an excess of people, you can place them in the hotels yes. at discounted rates. Yes, but, but discounted rate, again, is, is now hovering around $180. It's, it's not, not cheap. cheap anymore. Yeah. It's less than the three hundred dollars they pay as a walk-in, yeah. you know. But it's not cheap. And we're talking about the Pagoda and the Outrigger Resorts. The Outrigger has been really great, but the other hotels also have been wonderful in sharing their discounted rooms. You know, I remember early oh ten years ago when I was executive director, and I'd be on call on the weekend for emergency calls, and I remember getting a call from Kona, a gentleman in the ambulance with his wife going to the airport asking on a Sunday if he could stay at one of our discounted rooms because his wife was coming back for a treatment and it was an emergency and asking us can he please stay at a discounted room because their budget was really low so we made arrangements quickly for him to be okayed but we have emergency pe people who you know handle emergency calls like that but hopefully now we can go straight to Hope Lodge and they never have to worry about that so how, how uh who manages it? I mean, this is an American Cancer Society yes. Hawaii chapter uh, uh, facility, but do you have a manager on yes, site? Yes, we, we will have a resident manager on site. We also will have a facility manager and then volunteers. You know, course. we're a great volunteer organization. Yes, you are. And people have already signed up to be a volunteer there, to sit at the desk, to welcome them, to check them in, to, to show them around, to, you know, tour the facility so yeah we'll have volunteers that's there. one of the things that impressed me when i came up to see you and yeah. we made a movie on oc16 about Road the american recovery. cancer society yes and uh, you introduced me to some of your volunteers who happened to be there that day, and I was so impressed with. We their, still use them, yeah, you know, Road yeah, to Recovery. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, you know, where where do you see this going? I mean, twenty rooms, six hundred people. Uh, can it handle it? Will there be another Hope Lodge in our future? Well, no. Actually, 600 people, 650 people, about that many come from the neighborhoods. Yeah. But of that group, maybe 480 or, you know, 500 people need a room. Yeah. We'd like to give them that option. Yeah. You know, some of them will fly back on the late flight, yeah. but some of them, given the choice, may decide to stay. So, so you're trying to manage know. this as, as the um, exclusive uh, American Cancer Society Hawaii chapter uh, Hope Lodge. You, right. you don't have plans for a second one. No, actually the land is very expensive and, yeah. and we thank Queen's Hospital for giving us uh, the land there at a dollar a year for 60 nice. years. So very we paid nice. the very first nice 20 plan. years. You know, 20, year, 20 years <laughs> lease at a time is renewable the next 20 and the next 20. Yeah. And uh, Queens did ask us if we could add another floor to it because it's in a prime location. It's a block away from Queens Hospital. But yeah, yeah. we're in a capital zone, so we're limited to only go 60 feet high. Zoning. And, we, and, and also the footprint has to be large enough to have a garden. It has to be a certain way because of the punch bowl to capital uh, oh, yeah. zone. So capital, we can't build yeah. any higher. And, and the density, you know, we... We looked at property in Waikiki. There were properties there that was offered to us, but again, the traffic now from Not Waikiki. Not nearly as attractive. No. And you know, one of the things that people don't realize, they, they think of Queens and Kaiser, but there's Kuakini, you know, there's a Straub Hospital, there's Tripler. And what started this whole thing was a pastor from Kauai who was a veteran and had to go to Tripler for his chemo and radiation and asked the congregation to ask their friends in Honolulu if they could put him up. This happened in 2006. So he had to rent a car and drive it to Tripler Hospital. Now Tripler has a Fisher House that they uh, that have right? people kind of stay thing. there, but it accepts all kinds of patients, not just cancer patients. Yeah. And it's full to the gills almost all the time because yeah. they come from the Pacific area yeah. and to uh, Fisher House. Yeah. So they've been very cooperative with us and they're happy that we're opening a Hope Lodge in Hawaii. So veterans, veterans will be staying there going to Tripler Hospital. People don't think of it that way. But the wonderful thing about Gene is he did something about it. After his experience, 
he wrote an editorial to, in the Star Advertiser and said we the, need the Honolulu a, Advertiser. Honolulu right Advertiser at the time, that's right, and said we need a Hope Lodge in Hawaii. That was in 2006. So I called him up and I said, would you be able to come to Honolulu and speak to our board? And they said, of course. And Joe Wyckoff, you know Joe, who was chair, yeah. chair of the board, uh, welcomed him and he spoke to the board and said we need a Hope Lodge. It's not that easy now to just say okay we're going to build one. We had to demonstrate to the national organization that we were capable of raising the money. They, they weren't sure because we're such a small community but the need was so large because we're separated, you know, we're islands separated by water. So first this we have... This is not really an affluent community either. You know? Well, actually... It's hard to raise money. Well, right? actually we are, but there's so many organizations. And mm -hmm. thank goodness for Aloha United Way yeah. that pro provides a safety net for, you know, all of us nonprofits. Yeah. But um, we, they told us we had to raise money for a research grant first and show that we could fund that before they would give us the okay to go ahead with the Hope Lodge. That's where Dr. Larry Seo stepped in. Yeah. So he gave he's us. He's one of your major contributors. He's one of our major he? contributors. I remember that from my visit to his uh, wife to your had facility. died of cancer, yeah. and so he funded a uh, research grant or Wail, Dr. Wail El Shami at the cancer center, mm -hmm. and then uh, said he would fund that grant. Once he said that, they said, "Okay, you can look for land, and when you you know find the land and get everything going, we'll go." So it was in 2010. This was your project. By you, pride. Well, you were the uh, I guess well, I was staff the, officer, executive director at the time. Director exactly. At yeah. The time, yeah. And so we looked for land, and in 2010, the board signed a resolution saying yes. 2010, so six years, six raised years. 12 million dollars. 12 million. That 12 was million in that, That's a pretty nice facility for it's 12 million dollars. Wonder, well, the facility itself probably cost about eight million, but we had to have a reserve for operations. You know, we don't want to open the door and start begging for money right away. We welcome contributions because yeah. it costs about five hundred thousand dollars a year to sustain it. Well, let me you know, let me but, let me go back to the money then. So you yeah. you got the one dollar a year for the land. Yes. Uh, three and a half million from the Clarence Ching Foundation. Yes. That was really great. Yeah. Uh, I remember I attended one of uh, it was organized by Joe Wyckoff, for example, a yeah. fundraising dinner at one of the hotels. Yeah. Uh, where people were making contributions. Um, but, uh, you know, I, that's, uh, what did you say, you ultimately came up with $12 million? Yes, well, I would say the major foundations in Hawaii, the Atherton Foundation, I, I you know, would be remiss if I started naming them because I will miss them out, but Hawaiian Electric, American Savings Bank, Bank of Hawaii, First Everybody Hawaii was Bank, pitching in. all the, the major foundations pitched in and saw the need and, and gave us. Um, uh, Larry Rodriguez, our co-chair, you know, uh, Fred pa Fred Trotter was our yeah, chair, yeah, and then yeah. he died of cancer. Yeah. But Larry Rodriguez stepped in and co-chaired with Dr. Larry Sue and Jim Schiller. But Jim was living the on the mainland. Builder, yeah. yeah, so he would fly in uh, every other month, and when he did, we would have a meeting. And he's been a wonderful uh, chair for the uh, Hope Lodge campaign. This was a committee. great success, and now it's great coming, success. and it's so appropriate. You're here yeah. on this on this. You know, program uh, yes. right now. The thing is opening next, next week. Next Saturday. It'll be a big party, yes. I hope. Yes. And uh, you'll be able to celebrate your success in this project. Yeah, and let me name some other names too. Steve. Wait, okay. We're going to we're going to take a break. Okay. We come back. We're okay. going to name names. Okay. When we come back, we're going to name names. You'll be interested. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Jackie Young. She's a retired chief staff officer at the American Cancer Society uh, in Nuuanu, and we're talking about. Um, what are we talking about? Hope uh, Lodge, giving hope a home. Giving hope uh, at home. A home. Join us at Think Tech of Hawaii. Our show is Asia in Review. Our next program is on November 17. This is Johnson Choi, your host. Live. Aloha, I'm Richard Emery. I'm with co-host Jane Sugimura of Condo Insider, Hawaii's weekly show about association living. The uh, purpose of these videos is to educate board members and condo residents about issues uh, relating uh, to association living. Uh, we hope they're helpful and uh, that they uh, assist in resolving uh, problems that uh, affect the relationship uh, between boards and their residents. 
Each week, Thursday at 3 p.m., we bring you exciting guests, industry experts, who for free will share their advice about how to make your association a better place to live and answer a lot of very interesting questions. Aloha. We hope you'll tune in. Okay, we're back live with Jackie Young, your retired chief staff officer at the American Cancer Society in New Orleans, giving hope a home. Talking about the, the giving hope the, a home. Hope, the hope, um, hope Lodge. Hope Lodge, yeah. uh, which is right near um, right near uh, Queens Hospital. It's on Vineyard Street. Yeah, yeah two five one Vineyard Street. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, great success. I mean, you were there at the American Cancer Society a long time. Uh, but this is a great uh, achievement in your Well, in yeah, your and again, there. let me emphasize, one person spoke up, Jean Redden, and see wrote, a, wrote yeah. an editorial in the, um, an op-ed piece in the, in the advertiser, and yeah. we saw it, and we, we took that and ran with it, and, and he's coming back for the grand opening. Oh, He'll be great. here, yeah, you know, so we're very excited. But so many people, so many community, I mean, the Aloha United Way has been wonderful. We fit right into their safety net of helping people to get well and yeah. their quality of life. Yeah. yeah. So um, you wanted to name some names, Jackie. I interrupted oh, you. Oh, only because, you know, I mentioned Joe Wyckoff and, and Becky Ward, who's our current chair, but, yeah. but Stephen I.E., you know, Roz Baker. Yeah. They were all chairs during this period. Um, the doctors, Daryl Kurzawa, Paul Palalai, they were really wonderful. Dr. Carla Nip Sakamoto, they're all great in, in providing us with that. And, and what I had here is a, a little mm -hmm. note. Uh, when we, when the board agreed to do this, somebody handed me a ten thousand dollar check that day, and it was in two thousand and ten. And she said, "Please accept the enclosed for laying foundations, setting windows, and roofing the house that Hope <laughs> built." And it was Mary Friend Williamson and her husband, Dr. Thomas Benny Wilson from Kauai, from Kauai. And I kept the note because. It was the first it's, it's very touching. Yeah, money the that yeah. came in right away. Giving and it hope was, a home. It touched was, them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and since then, we've had, like on Maui, uh, Martin Luna, who was a very well-known uh, uh, lawyer. I and remember. Yeah. He had cancer, died. His family has put, into, put together Martin Luna a room there, you know, so Maui has a room and uh, the different islands have their rooms. And it's just a wonderful... Um, they'll feel comfortable when they're there. There was uh, something I, I wanted to read. Some person said that Hope Lodge is like a cocoon, that uh, when she was sick, she went to Hope Lodge, and, and she felt like she was taken care of, and, and so was her caregiver. And when she left, she felt she was coming out of the cocoon and that she was healing. You a know, place of safety. A place of safety. Yeah. And I remember going to Molokai when I, I went to Molokai Hospital and I announced there that we were going to build a Hope Lodge and immediately tears, the nurses there broke out in tears because they said so many of their patients declined to go to Honolulu for treatment because they couldn't afford the plane trip, they couldn't afford to stay there. People falsely think they have family, that people from the neighbor islands all have family here, and they can stay here when they're going through treatment. But even if they did, it's crowded in, in Honolulu. Yeah. So, and problematic. So they would just not take the option of getting treatment. They would just, oh. uh, no option. They would just say. Consequences are awful in that Absolutely. Case. So, you know, rather than come and get the treatment they needed, they would just stay and, and die an earlier death. Yeah. You know, which yeah. is, a, yeah. and we're talking about every year, 7,000 people diagnosed with cancer, 2,000 people in Hawaii dying from it every year. Yeah. So I just had my second cancer a year ago. I had breast cancer 18 years ago, and then I had kidney cancer. I had a kidney removed last year. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Yeah, and now my dog has cancer. <laughs> yeah, my dog is going through chemo, so I totally empathize. My he You're had, he had, a, he had an anal gland cancer. He had a two-hour surgery, but now he has to go to chemo every three weeks. So I totally understand his lack of appetite and his le lethargy, you know, because I went through the same thing. Thank you, you for know. sharing that. I, you know, can you tell us your your view of it, your view of cancer, where you know how people can best deal with it? Well, the, the way to best deal with it is to know your body, yeah. you know. So, and to know your body, you have to, you have to feel it well. You know, my daughter's a vet, one of my daughters a vegetarian. She said, "You wouldn't put sand in your gas tank, so don't put bad food in your tummy," you know. So, uh, 
we, you know, we have a saying in the American Cancer Society, eat a rainbow. That's the best advice. Rather than telling you particular foods to eat, eat a rainbow, <laughs> drink lots of water, don't eat so much processed food, exercise. I mean, those are common ways to keep yourself All healthy true, for yeah. everything. Yeah. But know your body enough that if a lump comes up, if there's... The thing about cancer, there are symptoms that come late but there are symptoms that come early. And the early ones are little lumps that you may feel. And in Hawaii, you know, for melanoma, that's a concern. And Martin Luna was Filipino. He was dark, he had melanoma. I mean, so it's not the color of your skin. You can get melanoma if you're dark skin, yeah. you know. So don't think you're immune from the sun yeah. just because you have dark skin. Yeah, yeah. Also, we have a campaign for colorectal cancer. If you're over 50 years old, be sure to ask for a colonoscopy. Yeah, screen, yeah. Once they find the, and I, I went through that because I had polyps and they were removed. Once they're removed, they don't grow into a cancer. So that's an early uh, detection that stops cancer also. So smoking, smoking has gone down. That's why the cancer center is having a little difficult time because the cancer center was uh, built on the Just premise funded on the, the tax money, the the money tobacco, from the cigarette yeah, yeah, yeah. would continue, <laughs> but the, we did such a good job educating people <laughs> that smoking rates went down, and uh, we don't know the effect of e-cigarettes now, though, electronic cigarettes. I'm sure it's not good. No, it's not good, but um, so that went down, and that's a good note, but, uh, but the cancer center is a wonderful addition to our community. They have some significant clinical trials that they are offering to people, and to be able to offer it to the neighbor island people is also good, not just to Honolulu. We on Honolulu forget that when you live in the neighbor islands, as wonderful it is to live on the other islands, we actually have high technology on this island. Yeah. The other islands aren't able to have the high-tech machines That's that true. we have. And we have and It's here. more efficient to have it in one place anyway. Yes, yeah. I mean, they have a lack of doctors on the neighbor islands, true. you know, so, but they do have oncologists there, but it's the technology that brings them to Honolulu, yeah. brings them to Queens, Tripler, Kokini, Straub, you know. I wanted, to, I wanted to take a few minutes with you and talk about cancer in the country. Yeah. Or possibly the world. Um, and can, how it affects uh, the, um, the mission of the American Cancer Society and how the Cancer Society itself changes to meet the changes in medicine, in technology. That's a big question. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, but I, I actually have been to India on a, uh, with the American Cancer Society to share our success in, in tobacco education. Mm -hmm. I went there and... Um, and did a seminar on on that and a lot access of to care. In India. Yeah, I visited some of their hospitals, which are not as uh, as sanitized. A lot of the places are not as, as sanitary or as as we have it. We're we're clean freaks in the United States. Went to Vietnam and we did the same thing there in Vietnam. We educated them, but in Vietnam, you had people going in the streets with trays of cigarettes, giving them samples. You know, so it's like really Terrible. fighting the <laughs> the tobacco companies, and they are really bombarding the Asian countries yeah. with uh, ads. Uh -oh. You know, but these are American companies. American companies, mm -hmm. but we've worked with China, for instance, when they had the Olympics there, to have them ban smoking in certain arenas. So we actually, American Cancer Society, made agreements with them so good, they good don't move. have. Yeah. So we have learned that we can't just be strictly with the American Cancer Society, we need to be global because what we do impacts the world. We do it at the invitation of the other countries and we share our information. We definitely have the technology in the United States. We have the education. We have the means to really um, uh, reduce cancer in the world and uh, early detection is really key. Yeah, and you're funding research. What kinds Absolutely. of research do you fund? Well, we have a research branch at the University, at the uh, American Cancer Society in the national office, and um, we actually have uh, 
people come to ask us, they apply for re special research grant. And this is why the Dr. Wa'il El Shami that Dr. Larry Sue funded, um, he had a special thing he was looking for. Um, I've looked at his publications since then, and it, they're groundbreaking. You know, when they show markers in, in your blood that show you that you might have cancer. Those are the kinds of things they're finding as they look more and more for ways to do early detection. Yeah. And his research is in that way, looking for a marker, you know. And there are other uh, research like that you know, where they're looking for certain ways uh, to test blood, to test for colon cancer without the, without what people want to avoid, which is, you know, going, you know, in, into your rear end and the colonoscopy. Yeah. There are ways to go down this way yeah, now and, and look. So there's just all kinds of ways to make testing easier. When you make testing easier or you can find it in the blood, there's even a breakthrough, a teenage boy, uh, of finding a marker for cancer in blood through blood tests. And it isn't yet spread, but those are the breakthroughs that are that are we can look forward to in the future. No magic bullet, though. There's no, no you magic can't bullet. take a pill. Well, because there are over 100 different kinds of cancers. Right. I mean, there, there's not just one cancer. We, we think of it cure cancer, but it's cure cancers. It's plural, over 100 different so kinds. So you have to deal with each one. Each one, and each one has a different marker, you know, a different way. You have blood cancers and you, you know, have organ cancers. And, you know, Mark Takai, you know, unfortunately died at a young age, you know, from cancer, pancreatic yeah. cancer, I yeah. believe he which is a, Which is a killer. Yeah, and then you have other people that have brain cancer and, you know, but for our children, 85% of their cancers have now given them a quality of life where they're living in they're living into their 20s and 30s where before they wouldn't get out of their teens. Yeah. So for leukemia and, and other ch childhood cancers they're able to to you know give them a better quality of life. We're just excited about that. Is is there more cancer in the world now today or, or is it we are seeing more cancer that what Probably, is always in existence? I think it was always there, but when people died, they frankly didn't want to talk about it yeah. because they said it was sort of taboo yeah. that if you had cancer in your family, your whole family would be like, oh, you know, uh, there's bad blood in your, and so people didn't talk about it. But way back, I think Betty Ford, Happy Rockefeller were the women who first said they had breast cancer and talked about it, and that made all the difference. And now you have uh, our making strides where people wear pink shirts and in the month of October, and are out, you know, marching. Um, but the way to really cure our cancers is to fund cancer research. Our um, ACS CAN, which is our um, advocacy group, that's the difference that's happening now is that we're putting much more effort into advocacy. So if anybody listening wants to join our ACS CAN, call up our 1-800-227-2345 number and ask how they can be an advocate for cancer. We need to support the Cancer Center, University of Hawaii Cancer Center, because it's really, uh, it's really going to be central in what we do in Hawaii. And, and they do some really important, they excellent work. They do some work fantastic there. work. So please support the University of Hawaii Cancer Center. Fund our research programs. Um, you know, on, on the mainland and the National Institute for Health. We lobby Congress. Our four representatives, our two senators, two they're wonderful in supporting us. They all understand. They all they all know. Brian Schatz's father, I believe, passed from recent, cancer. Yeah, but yeah, Maisie's yeah. been wonderful. Our two senators, Tulsi, you know, has been really good, and Colleen has always been behind us. So we've got great people in Congress. We're who doing well in Hawaii, us. don't you think? We we're we're conscious of this, well. and we actually take action on it. We build things like. Uh, you know, the, the, the Hope uh, Lodge. Yes. And so we are ahead of the game, aren't we? Well, and then when you look at the cancer survivors, we have about 80,000 cancer survivors in now. It would fill Aloha Stadium three times over. <laughs> that many cancer survivors yeah. to the point where people don't talk about it as much as they used to, but there's a cancer survivor uh, everywhere you go. And it's not necessarily a death sentence these days. No, and that's, I mean, you know, I'm an 18-year breast cancer survivor. I had a kidney removed one year ago. You know, my dog's a cancer survivor, <laughs> you know. So, yes, it's, we can deal with it. It's all about hope. I, I frankly cried more for my dog than I did for myself, <laughs> though, you know, when I found out he had cancer. 
That's that's Jackie Young. Know, she yeah. knows the score. <laughs> she she knows it personally. She knows it from the years she spent in the legislature. Uh, she knows it from the American Cancer Society, uh, from their facilities here, and especially now, including now Hope, Hope has a home. Now yes. Hope has a home. So if I Grand wanted to go, opening. how would I go? Next Just Saturday, show up November nineteenth, from noon to four o'clock. Show up, and I will be there. I'd be glad to show you around. And parking is at Central Middle School across okay. the street. Yeah, there right. lots of parking there, okay. and just walk in and you'll see what a comfortable place it is. You know, it's just that really there, there'll be a kitchen there, you can cook your own food. You don't want people cooking for you when you have cancer. Your taste buds change. Yes. So, so 